This video was brought to you by Stoenberg, Abed Rue Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? Today I have a little news update. So I have other videos I want to push out, but I feel like this one is really important. It's about Model Y and some other stuff. I've just gathered lots of stuff that I probably usually wouldn't put in one video. And then we talk about it. So um, first I should mention that uh, yeah, I will test the Citroen EC4 and the electric vans and whatever. I have to go to a PR entrepreneur and all that. I still have to do those things. It's just that I was a little bit busy with a very long trip to North Cape and back again with Wi-Fi. So we had to complete that. And then we started doing some Arctic Circle trip also with this car I'm sitting right now, the Model 3 long range, 82 kilowatt hour. But Yes, so we tried to clear up some uh, task, but but since many people still keep asking, Ionic 5, I'm gonna test it uh, the 26th and the 27th of July. Finally, I actually met people who have received their cars, they, they call it the Project 45. So seems like um, this time uh, Hyundai, they prefer to deliver cars to customer before giving some uh, journalists and influencers uh, to test it. Well, actually, but other journalists and influencers did get tested car a long time before me. I think they already tested it almost a month ago. So why am I getting it late? Who knows? Only Lord Elon Musk knows. Yeah, but uh, with the Ionic 5, I can only keep it for 29 hours. Uh, minus a little bit of overhead here and there. So effectively, maybe I have it for a little over 24 hours or something. And I'm planning on at least doing the most important tests range test, charging test, noise acceleration test. I, I guess I will only do the short acceleration test, unfortunately. Uh, and I I then need some sleep, but then I will squeeze in uh, um, uh, 1000 kilometer challenge. Yeah. And then I don't know about the banana box test and all the other tests, interior review. Uh, I actually could try to do it really quickly. Banana box test only takes about half an hour. The same for interior if I just kind of rush through it. Actually, not one hour. So actually, I'm trying to do all the tests in one go. In what? Yeah, within that time frame. I don't know again why I can't keep it for longer. They say sorry, it's not possible. I can only give, keep it for 29 hours, unfortunately. Um, it would be nice to at least keep it for uh, one extra day so I don't have to stress too much, but okay, I guess that's the deal. Um, well, okay, Model Y, let's talk about that one. So, Model Y is coming to Europe, Norway, especially Norway. So, um, uh, it's gonna come from Giga Shanghai in China, yes. Um, seems like Tesla realized that um, uh, Giga Berlin is going to be delayed and people are waiting for the Model Y. So yes, we'll get from China. Uh, should you guys be concerned about build quality? Well, maybe you should be more concerned if you come from uh, Fremont, right? <laughs> so made in China is good stuff. So yes, um, and the the, well, the the great news is that uh, Norway will get the Model Y first in Europe. We will get it already in August. But you see, people who have ordered the car a long time ago, they're gonna get them first in August. Whereas if you order today, you will actually get it in September already. And um, uh, the rest of Europe, they will get it from September and so on. So it seems like uh, the, the first boatload to Europe will come to Norway. <laughs> yeah, but I also asked Marcus Biel because he ordered um, Model Y, I think a couple of them a while ago. And he asked the salesperson at Tesla. They couldn't confirm. They have to look at the wind and everything. So we can only hope that Marcus' car will come in um, in August also. If not, then I don't know really, maybe some followers, I mean fans can lend me their car or something. Uh, I'd like to test, at least test maybe banana boxes and whatever, the basic test. I wouldn't have to do too much driving yet. Interior review also needs to be done. But yes, uh, and then actually Marcus, uh, yesterday he was quite busy. He uh, canceled some Model 3s he ordered. I think it was the Model 3 with the 580 kilometer range. And then he ordered a bunch of extra Model uh, Y instead. And I said, yes, good call because Norwegians and I guess also Europeans in general, they, uh, for some reason, they want to use SUVs or crossovers, especially in Norway. If you just drive around town, 
to the cabin somewhere you will see so many suvs xc9 this uh those uh, uh mitsubishi outlanders uh all kind of suvs and crossovers very common in norway but also the rest of europe so i would say that model y might even be more popular than model 3 we'll see in a couple of years but right now by the way i can mention that again if you i should make a video about this right uh just uh comment if you want me uh, I should make a video about traveling, uh, just go driving around Oslo because nowadays there are Model 3s everywhere. Like, every, my neighbor got a Model 3 now, um, the other neighbor, not this one. Model 3s are everywhere, man. Uh, I checked the, the sales numbers on the Elbil uh, statistic, uh, Tesla stats and Elbil statistic, and Model Y, no, sorry, Model 3 is now. Uh, the third most selling EV in Norway. It's only been beaten by Leaf and E-Golf. Think about this. E-Golf has been selling for a long time, but it's now discontinued. And Leaf has also been selling for a long time. And Model 3 just zoop, It's about to overtake them. And then Model Y, same zoop, and then psh, yeah. Uh, and I should mention one thing. People uh, discuss that. Uh, so the Model Y has 505 kilometers of range. What about why does Model 3 have so much more range? 614 kilometers. Well, uh, my guess is that uh, the Model Y was configured with uh, the the old battery before 79 kilowatt hour or some somewhere around there. Uh, which then had the old, uh, I think back then they used uh, the 560 or 580 kilometer uh, VLTP Model 3 battery. But now we have the 82 kilowatt hour battery. So that's why I guess if they put the 82 kilowatt hour battery in the Model Y, maybe you get 530 kilometers of range or something. But this comes from Giga Shanghai. So I guess they don't use the Panasonic battery over there. Maybe they use the LG. Yeah, I heard they use the LG battery. That's right. So. Yeah, I don't know too much detail about it. I'm just going to talk, talk to you about uh, that. Hopefully, in about one month, I'll be able to test Model Y. Now, over to the next case. What about uh, Model S Plaid and Roadster? Well, Roadster, who knows? It's Elon time. Again, I have no idea when Roadster is coming out. Uh, but again, like you guys have seen it over and over again with Model X coming to US first, with Model Y coming to US first, uh, and other cars, uh, Model 3 also, is that us usually gets them and also yeah and also model s plaid they usually get them early and first of course and then we will get them around six to twelve months later so we even don't know when the model s plaid will come to europe yet so i'm just sitting there like wow it's awesome me wants it when i see the plaid videos but then unfortunately we can't drive them here in europe yet and also when it comes to my you know you guys remember i made a video where i i uh, um i made a reservation for model s plaid plus that was a long time ago uh, some people didn't get the memo because i already canceled well, i didn't cause i changed that reservation because i realized that the plaid plus will be delayed so we don't need it because broads they will be out and then uh, you guys heard it probably that um Tesla also canceled the Plaid Plus because there were there was just not enough um, uh, demand for it. So who knows what actually happened there? But yeah. So right now I have a reservation for a long range only. But uh, I kind of want the Plaid, <laughs> not the Plaid Plus, just the Plaid the way it performs. So we'll see. But again, like I talked about before, nowadays I barely have time to drive my own car. So yeah, um, if I buy a Plaid, it's going to be freaking expensive. That's one thing. But do you actually have time to drive it? And I might be able to borrow it from someone else anyway, like Marcus, right? But on the other hand, Marcus has been lending me not too expensive cars. Will he actually lend me a 1.3 million Nook or 130K Euro car to me and let me drive it to Germany. Uh, I'm not sure about that one. Okay, anyway, next case, COVID. So, um, on the 7th of July, wife and I, we took the first and only shot of uh, Pfizer um, vaccine. So it was right over here. It was pretty smooth the way they did it. Went over there, we had an appointment 10 in the morning and uh, Right after the shot, uh, they said, uh, we, we got a little document, a little stuff about 
uh, okay, you, you will get some side effects uh, and stuff. And I was like, ah, well, two hours after I took the shot, I was feeling fine. I posted on Facebook, yeah, this is no problem. But then the side effects came. <laughs> so, because I was thinking, ah, oh, but you know, I'm immune to this shit because I had COVID. So it will, might not affect me as much as other people who never had it before. Same wife was thinking. No, but uh, the side effects started around 12, to four, uh, 12 to 24 hours after the vaccine was shot. Uh, wow, even now I feel a little bit, uh, I feel a little bit tender in my uh, shoulder. They shot, they put it on the left shoulder, so that's good because uh, the right arm is is pumping the shaft and everything. You know, I'm yeah. Um, but I had headache. Wife and I, we had headache. I was feeling cold the first night. Uh, I was sleepy. I have been sleeping a lot lately. Uh, and in general, uh, fever and stuff, but not, not heavy. These are more light. Um, yeah, but I think by now we are fairly okay. I think we are kind of recovered from it. Wifey still has some headache, but for me, I'm kind of recovered. And today is the, what was the day today, man? I, it's a tent. What? It's been almost, it's been three days. Wow. Okay, but you see, wife and I, uh, this is kind of weird because when we booked the, the COVID, uh, I mean the, the vaccine, uh, we can't choose by the way, it's just Pfizer uh, over here. They use some of the other ones, but uh, I think it was the AstraZeneca and then some people died in Norway. So Norway, they just kind of, no, we're not gonna use it. So they only use Pfizer, which is good because I heard that's the best. Yeah, and um, we had to choose the first shot, but also the second shot. We we're like, huh? But we, I heard, well, okay, you know. But then when we came there, they checked and they said, oh, okay, you had COVID before. You only need one shot. That's the doctor said. And also it was written online. So uh, that's, at least in Norway, it works like that. You only take one shot because you had it before. I hope I have enough protection. Uh, I should have 150% protection by now, right? 150% <laughs> resi resistance against uh, COVID. Yeah, um, but uh, for you guys who might not know, uh, Norway, we now have adapted to the EU. Uh, so we, when you go to Helsinki and log in there and check your COVID passport, you will see the Norwegian version of it and there's a tab, you switch to it, and then you can see the EU version of it, besides the color of the EU flag. And that one can be used when traveling tr across Schengen, Europe. Um, and also Norway, they have now adapted to the rest of the EU when it comes to threshold for how many people are infected uh, versus, I mean, percentage. And, you know, to, to color the map green or so many, for Norway, uh, many countries, like, I don't remember, it was France, Germany, or many countries, they were not green, but now they are green, which means that Norway also consider them fairly safe to travel through. And if, even if I've been in many of the European countries and I come back to Norway, I don't have to quarantine, but uh, again, uh, this is an exception because uh, people who have not taken the, the vaccine or haven't gone through COVID, they have to quarantine. But for me, I don't have to quarantine regardless. Uh, but I also heard nowadays that people are traveling. So um, uh, I can then go on a road trip with wifey uh, across Europe, uh, but uh, I don't know, we, we don't have time yet. I'm, I'm still waiting for <laughs> testing Ionic 5 anyway soon. So I kind of stuck here in uh, around Norway for the next month, roughly. Maybe in August I can take a road trip, but then the Model Y might come in August. So. Uh, we'll see, but uh, taking a Euro road trip is not the highest priority right now. And I think the government still recommends that people don't travel unnecessarily. But on the other hand, nowadays I see more and more foreign license plates on foreign cars coming to Norway. I've seen uh, German vans, Dutch uh, cars, uh, so they, they are allowed to come in. So at least if you guys want to travel to Norway, I guess you can. Uh, yeah, I think you, you just, you need a, you need a COVID passport to enter. I, I'm not sure about this. You have to Google it yourself, but I think from what, what I heard, 
you have to fill in a form, some kind of immigration form uh, when you enter the country. You also need the COVID passport, the EU version. Uh, probably they, they will probably accept your EU version because they have adapted to EU, even though Norway is not part of EU, but we are part of Schengen and Europe. Yeah. And I think that's it, but I'm not sure if you have to take the test or not, the COVID test or not, but okay. Um, but you should be able to enter. Other people, are, the Germans are here, so you should also be able to come here, right? Okay, uh, next case, new house. People, okay, the reason why I talk about this is because uh, many people keep asking, and that's why instead of answering 100 people, I make a video about it. So uh, not much going on with the new house. Uh, we are just in the planning process. We haven't, they haven't uh, dig any, dug anything yet. I've been uh, in communication with Idehus about uh, plan, uh, or, uh, designing the house and we are making custom house. And then the Idehus then has communication with uh, the architect that draws the, the house. We have the, we had like an outline some ideas and then the architect made uh, architect uh, what do you call it the, the the drawings right and then we adjusted the feedback and back and forth so we are roughly there right now and the uh, what I heard in Norway list uh, you have to have these these drawings very precisely how you want them and then we have to apply uh, for permission to build it or something yeah Okay, um, so uh, I think that was pretty much it. So yeah, I should mention that I will do some tests soon. Actually, um, yeah, we, today is Saturday. Tomorrow night or tomorrow evening, the plan is that, oh, wow, car, the screen is about to go dead. No, but um, uh, uh, six tomorrow evening, I'm planning on doing 1000 kilometer challenge with this car. This Model 3, long range, even though in the beginning I thought I don't need to do it. Uh, th th this is the one with 82 kilowatt hour battery pack. But um, I realized that the previous version of this long range had a pretty poor result because it was charging slow. And I said uh, back then that, well, Tesla is probably doing this because they're gathering data and they will boost up the speed. And they did, they boost up the speed. It's charging way faster. I've been on a road trip to the Arctic Circle and back in, you have seen already episode one and it was charging way better. Uh, it, it had a nice and flat charging curve. Uh, even at 40%, it was receiving 140 kilowatt. That was something I never saw in the LG battery before. So it is important to prove that the car has been better and um, improved now and uh, we might be able to see, okay, we don't have V3 supercharger support all the way now tomorrow, but at least we have around half the way-ish or something. So, uh, oh yeah, Kopple <laughs> opened Rutshögda uh, now, a new charging location right at the turnaround point when we go back. So maybe I'll visit that one. They have a 200 kilowatt uh, Delta charger. So it um, would be interesting to see how many kilowatt we get from it if we get more than 140 kilowatt from it. But uh, anyway, yes, yeah, so I want to do the 1000 kilometer challenge because I think we can do it in about nine and a half hours, which is going to be pretty good. Uh, it's still a nice time to just to set. Um, and then I will also, I'm not done with the China car yet. Um, I will do Arctic Circle run with it because I believe that uh, also the, the LFP or the standard range plus will, will be pretty fast. Uh, and also I should mention some people when this, you, you guys saw yesterday's video when we set a pretty good time on this car. Um, some people were like, hey, but if you took the shortcut with the e-tron GT, that one, then you would have saved 10 minutes. Well, would you? Because if you look at the map, the e-tron GT can simply not go directly from Oslo to Klett. It has to stop and top up somewhere because it doesn't have the same range as this car. And that means that um, you have to top up somewhere. But the e-tron GT needs high, uh, well, it doesn't only need high power charger, it needs Ionity. Because those so-called high power chargers, they're only 150 kilowatt. E-tron wants 350 or at least 270 kilowatt. Which means that you can either top up at DAR, but then the battery will be pretty high and also semi coal and you actually won't get a very good speed. Uh, you can say that the e-tron GT also slightly cold gates when the battery is cold. It's like that for every car. 
Um, next possible option would be um, uh, Elverum, but Elverum uh, is a slight detour from the highway. That's the problem. So you have to take, uh, according to Google, a s an eight minute total detour to go from the highway to the Ionti charge at Circle K and then back again. So you will be losing eight minutes and you will also be topping up there with uh, over 60% state of charge, which means that you might not only get 150 kilowatt uh, or something just so you can take that shortcut because uh, in order to take that shortcut you you have to have good enough range um, tesla has an, another advantage they have chargers everywhere so uh, they can for example for for the <laughs> for the standard range plus i can take that shortcut but i don't have to go all the way to clut because i have a supercharger in bike hook uh, but uh, other cars, they simply don't have any high power chargers there, so they have to go to Klett, unfortunately. So most likely the e-tron GT cannot make it faster. The only difference now is that we have a high power charger in, uh, in Steinchai that we didn't have last time. Uh, that one would probably have speeded up by maybe five more minutes if we stopped there instead of uh, shut down. Maybe, okay, maybe five to ten minutes faster. Yeah, best case. But okay, uh, long video, right? But I try to clear everything because these are questions that people ask me and I will not only, I could of course just answer it in the comment section, but uh, giving you guys this explanation is deeper and better and then everyone will get the message, yeah. Uh, but okay, uh, I think that's gonna be it. A little news update. Uh, I don't know, do you guys like this kind of news update? Because from time to time I have stuff I wanna tell you, but again, I don't wanna just put it in one video unless it's really important. But now you guys have got a little bit of everything and you can prepare your popcorn for tomorrow night. Uh, I will live stream. I will start live streaming uh, five something in the afternoon and we will start six in the afternoon European time. So I think that's gonna be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.